Do you wonder why your insurance premiums on your home are so high? We're going to cover ways to lower your monthly insurance and what goes into calculating the insurance. I've got an expert here today, Kathy Leger. She's in my market here in Texas. What are the four main factors that influence home insurance premiums? That's a great question, Jen. Um, the four main factors are going to be claims, location, coverages, and the house characteristics. So to first go into claims, this is really something that sometimes you have control over. So it is important to try to manage this. But definitely if a home has had claims, whether it was um, while you were living in the home or prior to you purchasing the home, those actually can both affect the premiums that you pay for anywhere from three to five years. Did y'all hear that? Like the history of people that lived in the home that are not even you can affect your home insurance premiums. Like that is huge. I actually didn't even know that until recently when you told me. Yeah. Yes. That is really surprising. All obviously a really important reason why buyers should really do their research while they're still in that option period. Because if we do discover that there's a particularly detrimental claim that has been filed, we'll want to know that before uh, you're out of your option period. But yes, that is uh, very surprising for most people to hear. So Kathy, what's another, there's a few more, right? That affect that can influence your premiums. So we talked about claims. That's right. So next on the list would be location. And obviously you can't really determine what uh, the location of your home is, certainly if you're already in that home. But we look at things like um, proximity to water. When we speak nationally, um, it depends on if you are in an area that has a high propensity of tornadoes or hurricanes, or is it really active in terms of hail. Just in Texas, we have those three divisions uh, based on wherever you choose to reside in Texas. So um, when it comes to proximity to water, obviously we have a higher uh, opportunity for hurricanes, um, the more north we get in our great state, the more likely that you'll have hailstorms and tornadoes. And so all of this gets wrapped up into the actuarial data that they decide how much they should charge. And it will all be based on the likelihood of those weather events occurring. So that is really where location comes in. Gotcha. So there's a couple more, right? Uh, That's right. So we talked about claims and location. That's right. Next, of course, is going to be the coverages that you select. It has a direct tie into how much you pay for your insurance premiums. Once we have decided what carrier is gonna be most competitive for you, well, now we get down into the fine tuning of what coverages do you feel are gonna be best for you and your family. And then of course, the premiums that correlate with that. So of course, the more coverage um, that you uh, feel you should have for the home, then of course, the more the premiums will be. And sometimes we can offset that for you if we know we have a higher value home, then maybe we can look at other characteristics like how much personal property you have, maybe how much liability, just different areas that we can fine tune to help control the premium a little better for you. So Kathy, that that's really great information and I'm so grateful because you've actually helped me on a couple of my houses. So you've been amazing and all of those things really are important the one that I think is the most important that people might overlook is, is it true that the house characteristics like the age of the house and the amenities is a huge factor in calculating these premiums? Yes, definitely. So when we look at um, characteristics like age of home, as you mentioned, um, age of roof is a real big one here, certainly in our coastal counties. Um, whether or not there are updates to the home. So did the seller or yourself um, do any updates to the home to wiring, electrical panels, plumbing? Um, these directly tie into the premiums. Again, why? Because these things will affect the likelihood that something will fail in the time that they're insuring you. So, um, uh, and then the other items like number of stories, square footage, um, exterior, and then overall construction quality, which is something where we as agents really have to do our due diligence and take a look at this house inside and out. You know, we may have a 3,000 square foot home valued at 300,000, and then there might be a 3,000 square foot home valued at 1.2 million. And so it's really our job to make sure we do our research, 
and that we are ensuring that home for the proper value because those characteristics determine value and value determines premium. So Kathy, that's actually a really important point. Uh, lenders, if you have a loan on your home, uh, this is going to be important for you. If you don't, you can if, when you're paying cash or you own your house free and clear, your coverage is kind of up to you. Is that is that right, Kathy? First, I wanted to answer that for everybody. Yes, correct. Technically, if there is no loan on your home, this is your house 100% and you can make all the decisions you want to cover it or not cover it. But that brings an important point that if someone, let's say their replacement cost, you mentioned 300,000, if their replacement cost, the cost to build new, if there was heaven forbid, a complete disaster was 300,000, but they're trying to take shortcuts and they say, oh, I wanna get my premium down. I wanna do it for 150. What's gonna happen? What's the con in that? Definitely. Um, it's short-sighted. So sometimes we do have to counsel our clients on you're going to need to make a decision. Do you want to pay now or are you willing to pay later? And on this side of the claim, before anything has ever happened, we are always so focused on premium and price and how to get it down and how to get it lower. However, ironically, the very same person on the other side of the claim, once there has been damage, is absolutely focused on I need uh, the right amount of money to replace all of my belongings, rebuild my house exactly the way that it was before. I think it should be more money. We should be paid more for this claim. So we can't do both. Um, we will have to make decisions, sturdy financial decisions on what we can afford to pay now so that we don't regret that decision later. And there's a lot of variables to that policy that we can look at, but it will never make sense to self-insure. And sometimes we will have a client say, you know, I don't like the renewal. It went up $800. This is my house. There's no lender. I think I'm just going to self-insure. And to that person, we very kindly say, if you can afford to self-insure, then you can afford the $800 increase for the year. It will never oh. make sense to accept a multiple hundred thousand dollar risk um, over this fairly small increase. Yeah, that is a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, you're not in this alone, y'all. The insurance companies are there for a reason, and that is to help you in case of this catastrophe. I mean, we definitely all want our premiums down, but at the cost of what, right? So if you are getting a loan, you have to get it insured for the replacement cost. So that's just really just a hard line. So if even if your loan is 200000 and your replacement cost is 300,000, you have to be insured for that total replacement cost. It wasn't always that way in the past, but insurance companies are really cracking down uh, because there's claims. There's been a lot of disasters all over the country of late. So uh, global warming, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> El Nino. <laughs> so Kathy, we get insurance because of emergencies. And in the case of an emergency, that's what I pay insurance for. So why should my premium go up or does it if I then have a claim because of an emergency that of you know was no fault of my own? That's why I'm paying insurance. Why does that later or does it increase my premium later on? Very good question. We actually get that question a lot. Sometimes clients are frustrated to hear that because they filed the claim, that their rate is gonna go up again, as we talked about earlier, up to three to five years, depending on the type of that claim. So it goes back to one of your original questions, Jen, which was, what are the characteristics that determine premium? If you remember, one of those four was claims. So when we're first writing your policy and perhaps you're first purchasing your home, um, remember that we're going to run a loss report. So your premium is based on the fact that there have been no claims at all. So you're rated originally for and rewarded for not having any claims on your record. Once that data changes and there has been a claim, there is no claims free discount per se. So now you're rated as someone who has had a claim. Now in most cases and with most carriers, at least in Texas, whether typically will not negatively affect your rate. But I do remind people, you're not penalized for having the hail storm over your house. There wasn't much you could do about that. But we'll all be penalized for the massive hail storm that hit Texas. And that's really where they spread the risk. So we're always very careful to say, 
you know, yes, Mr. Client, your rate is not going to be negatively affected by your claim. Uh, not to say that it won't go up at renewal. So claims history is important. Weather is the only one that will not negatively affect your premium. Every other claim that you have on the homeowner side will definitely negatively affect your rate. So we always want to speak to that customer before they feel they need to file that claim. We want to ask you a couple of questions. What happened? What are the estimates? And compare that to your deductible. And then together, uh, we can make a really sound decision on whether or not this is worth filing the claim, putting it on your record for three to five years um, in exchange for a claim payout. So that's really just a, a solid discussion we want to have. So... Kathy, if you're already paying your mortgage payment, why would it go up? Let's say your your insurance is, you know, X 200 a month, let's say, and it went up possibly, or when could it go up and how would it, we even know how much it's going to go up? Yes. So one thing that's important to remind our clients is that when we're completing coverage for someone, the policy term for property is always going to be for a full year. And at the top of that document that you sign, it says application. And essentially what we're doing is we as the agent have completed everything on that report to the best of our ability based on what we have access to. You as the client have answered everything on that application to the best of your ability. But we're not done. We're just applying. You're asking to be the client at this amount of premium. We are asking to offer you coverage um, up to this amount of money based on the risk qualities that we can see. But that application, once signed and paid for, then goes un into underwriting. And underwriting really does go through everything with a fine-tooth comb. And most important to know is that just about all carriers now will do an exterior inspection of your home. So they say, thank you, Kathy. We see that you entered the data based on photos. We're going to go ahead and send somebody to the property with drones over the rooftop to count every shingle and make sure it's in place, what we do not have access to, um, to check all of the windows, make sure that there's no damage, to check the driveways and make sure there's no cracks in it, um, to verify square footage. Was the listing correct? Is the appraisal district correct? They're gonna go out and sometimes walk that square footage. So should anything be different from the time that we applied or with the data that we entered in, to what the inspector was able to find, that absolutely will directly change the premium. So yes, we are applying and we are assuming the rate will stay the same. We don't want there to be changes unless they go down. But then it's the insurance company's job to decide, did we get it right? Did you get it right? Did we get it right? And is there anything else now on the property that might be of a concern to that insurance company uh, before they issue final uh, coverage. So Kathy, that brings up actually a, a big question that I have. Um, so let's say that I did the application and then there were some changes. Uh, maybe they did the drone and saw my roof, et cetera. Would they wait till the year is up to make changes in the premium or would they send me a letter saying, hey, you owe us this amount of money? How does that work? Definitely, they do not wait. Their job is to get it right before, uh, really as soon as possible to make sure that they're collecting the right amount of premium. And in your example, I think that's a great example. Um, there's two different types of shingles. We thought we saw one from the photos. After they get out there, scratch it, test it, they determined it's a different type of shingle. The one I gave you was a discounted rate, maybe because of its uh, sturdiness. And the one they saw is not a discounted rate. They're going to immediately fix that because it has been now proven that something we had on the application is wrong. The rate you received is based on something that we just didn't have accurate. So again, it, we really try to do our due diligence, but every agent does not go out to every property um, and get on ladders and drones. So sometimes um, it's just difficult to get it right. But to answer your question, 
they will rectify it immediately. So I did want to mention this. Uh, Kathy brings up an amazing point. If you are buying a new home, uh, you know, you're getting into a new home, leaving the current one or from rental, it doesn't matter. But if you're going to be purchasing a house, you've got to do insurance sooner than later. We've had some clients that wait until the last minute because premiums are high. And so they're like, oh my gosh, I've got to shop around, which is great. But please give that priority in the beginning when you're buying a house, because we've actually been seeing that insurance companies companies are sending someone sooner than later before the closing. The last thing insurance companies want to do is send you a bill after the fact because it's confusing for everybody. So we've seen drones, you know, we've heard of drones going out. We've heard of these inspections prior to the closing. You definitely want to have that diligence done ahead of time. So choosing insurance a week before closing, you can't, you just can't do that anymore. So I just wanted to kind of sidestep and mention that. Super, super important. Kathy, what types of things, just before we get to some cost-saving tips, so you want to hang in there with us. We're talking about what can make premiums go up, but we want to talk about what can help premiums go down. But in, in finality, the things that you've seen, Kathy, that can make a premium go up. So Kathy, if you could just summarize for us the things that make the premium go up before we get into some saving tips, uh, what are just kind of some some big things that, that affect those premiums? Yeah, the main things that really cause it to go up are going to be, as we mentioned before, claims history, and the characteristics, like the older the home, the older the roof, the, the proximity to water, all of these things will drive up premium. And then certain things that you do, um, you know, certainly when you're in the process of buying a home, you're very well aware of your credit scores and insurance premiums are directly tied to uh, something very similar to the FICA score, which we call an insurance, a CIS score. So it's really important to make sure that you're maintaining just the highest score possible because insurance um, is going to be based on the probability of the home um, having failure. And then, of course, the probability of this insured having an issue uh, in the time that they insure. Higher CIS scores are indicative of clients who typically uh, handle um, preventative maintenance on their homes. They stay ahead of the problems. They're replacing before it becomes an issue. Um, and they're more likely to maintain continuous coverage and pay premiums on time. So uh, that's really one thing that you have control over that will help keep that premium down. So Kathy, I've always wondered how these home insurance companies calculate these premiums. I mean, is it kind of like the credit score where it's this algorithm behind the scenes and you, you plug stuff in and like it, it swoops out a number or how does that work? So it can get really complicated when you go down to the finite explanation as to how they mathematically derive what's going to be their cost per thousand in coverage. But definitely what drives that there's an entire actuarial department of every company. And these are those crazy guys that don't really come out in daylight. And they're just really into data analysis. So they're looking at years and years of history. What is the probability that a home in Houston will suffer the wind uh, damage versus a house in Austin? And it's just years and years of data. And they use that obviously for predictive measures. So being able to determine what is the probability that this home right here is gonna file a claim. If it's a high probability, we better collect that money more quickly than we collect premiums from someone, say, in Austin or San Antonio or in a non-threatening part of the state. Getting down to how it's all calculated, it all comes down to profit loss. This zone has proven to be an expensive place to insure premiums have to stay high. That very same house over in Austin or San Antonio, a tenth of the premium because they just historically proved not to be an area that's problematic for claim payouts. So it's all driven by the probability that they will have to pay for your damages. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's kind of how the credit score works in mortgages too. The probability that you're going to be late in the next couple of years, it sounds like it's, it's very similar. It's all about forecasting. Interesting. Okay. So now for the most important thing that everybody wants to know, because we've talked about how premiums can go up. What about how premiums can go down? So, OK, here we are. Wait for it. How can your premiums go down? We, the consumer, Kathy, want to know what we can do to lower those premiums. Well, if I haven't said it enough, for sure, maintaining a claims free record is going to be really important. Claims free discount on home is excellent. On auto is better, especially the more drivers we get in the household. So maintaining claims free as, as often as you can would be great. 
Another thing when it comes to our home specifically is there's a lot of safety discounts. Uh, you may be purchasing a home that's wired for a monitored system. Get it monitored. Find the most cost-effective way to do that. But when we look at monitoring not only the burglar but also the fire, there's an added discount for that. If you're not home and the smoke detectors go off, it will automatically dispatch that fire department. Insurance companies like that. We don't want to know that you're on vacation, the house is up in flames, and we have to wait for a neighbor uh, to call it in. It's going to be a lot more damage than necessary. Certainly, smart water sensors. So water damage, water leaks, uh, it's a big expense to insurance companies. When you think about areas where there's drip pans, like water heaters, the AC drip pans, all of these areas need to stay dry. And unfortunately, a common claim is those things fill and they should have been dry and they fill with water and we have no idea. They continue to fill and we don't know it until, of course, they've overflowed and they're starting to cause damage. Kathy, I've actually, when you mentioning that, I've heard that there's a device you can put on your water heater that like starts beeping or gives you some kind of an alert when the water pan is filling. Is that true? It is true. They're wonderful. They're very affordable. I really encourage you. You can shop online uh, for water sensors. And now there's even smart water sensors. So in addition to the audible that you hear if you're actually in the home at the time, they now can text you. So anywhere you are away from the home, you'll get a text that says, hey, we've detected water, bathroom number three behind the toilet. So that if you have a way to get home or you have a way to shut that water off, then you can go ahead and handle it right away and prevent that loss from happening. There's even smarter water sensors that you can have a plumber attached to your main water line. And then as soon as it detects water, you give it the okay or automatically and it shuts off the water to the house. And so that's really useful, particularly for our clients who have multiple properties. You don't really want to leave all of these decisions in the hand maybe of the tenant, or maybe this is for families who travel a lot. It's real important to know that if you're leaving town for two to three weeks, you don't have a single stress about having a water issue. Long have we been told that if you're leaving town for a week or two, you should shut the water off uh, when you're going on vacation. And I would imagine not too many of us do that. So if we could have an automated system watch over our home like that, it would be great. So of course, insurance companies are going to heavily discount for that. So Kathy, does bundling your insurance like auto, et cetera, does that always lower your premium? So a bundled discount will always lower your premium. However, the bundle is not necessarily always the best financial route to go. Quite often, we may have a really competitive auto product with one carrier, and then we may have a really competitive home product with a different carrier. And while there isn't a discount that ne necessarily correlates between the two, each are so competitive on their own that it beats any other opportunity for bundled discounts. So I wouldn't get too uh, caught up in whether or not you're getting a bundled discount. It really comes down to what is the combined price that I'm paying. In fact, I often see that when there is a bundled discount, one is usually severely overpriced. And sometimes that might lead us to make decisions that mm, I realize this home isn't the best home product that I can get, but because it's discounting my really expensive auto, I'm going to go ahead and get it anyway. And so we don't want to do that. Don't be led through this bundle uh, thinking it's your best scenario. Sometimes it's great for us and we'll let you know, and sometimes it isn't. So another thing I've heard uh, and seen clients do is they'll increase their deductible. Like 1% is pretty standard. So a deductible is, you know, if your replacement cost we talked about earlier is 300000 a 1% deductible would be 3000 3, if you had a claim, right? So I've seen people go 2 3 even 5% of deductible. Is that a good way to lower your premiums? So when we're asked for pricing in this scenario, of course, we'll go ahead and give them the pricing and let them know what the savings is. And then I always really like to break down that savings, which is usually a couple hundred dollars for the year and really break that down into a monthly amount for them. And then really explain, hey, Jen, your house is half a million dollars. When you increased it by 1%, you know, you just increased your out of pocket by another $5,000 come claim time. And yet I only saved you $23 a month to do that. So I really encourage people to think about um, how much is the trade-off. And I almost never find the trade-off to be worth it. And of course we will counsel our clients that way. It's again, fairly short-sighted to wanna save two or 300 for the year and be willing to pay that much. 
Um, we had a claim not too long ago where at renewal, she really wanted us to increase these deductibles to help her re uh, reduce her renewal rate. And of course, unfortunately, she ended up having a claim. It's really not a good feeling, um, even for us as agents, when we do have to counsel you and just that her voice was so deflated as soon as I told her it was like a $23,000 deductible. So we really have to think about that. Are we willing to set aside an extra $23,000 um, and pay every claim that happens to our home up to the $23,000 could be multiple claims in a year for all we know in an effort to save 200, 500 for the year. So, you know, it's not our best way that we recommend to save premium. So Kathy, I have learned so much today, even though I've closed so many loans, I'm always learning about insurance. Thank you for joining us. Now, if you think this is gonna help a friend, please pass it along. And I wanna say also, just to wrap it up, that this is why getting a referral to an insurance agent that's gonna explain things to you, Kathy, is amazing at explaining. Now, she can't be the only insurance <laughs> company in the whole nation. Uh, in fact, Kathy, you insure just in Texas. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Get a referral from friends. If you're in a state other than Texas, get some referrals. Quote with a few different companies. Um, they're not all the same. And this is why referrals are more important than ever to make sure that you're educated with someone who's honest and is going to tell you the real facts, no BS about insurance. Now, Kathy talked about credit. If you're wondering how to improve your credit to make sure that at the time you get a policy and even at that renewal, that it's the highest possible, check out our next video about credit. We'll talk to you soon.